Quick question, which one of these errors is going to be printed out in a console if caught? Well, the normal answer would be all of them, but in reality, it's not. You see, depending on the environment that Node.js is running on, it's not going to print out at least one of them, be it a mobile app, a browser, or a desktop app. Error handling within Node.js is quite complex and difficult, as you saw from this example. But in this video, we're gonna dive pretty deep into the details and best practices of error handling in order to take your error handling skills to the next level. If you're ready, let's get started. All right, friends, so in this video, I'm gonna go over four different advanced scenarios that I think you should be aware of. So without further ado, we're gonna start with the very first one. And this one is about extending the ordinary JavaScript error object. Why? Let me explain. So imagine we're trying to add some kind of a product which is undefined. And obviously, if we want to do that, or if we try to do that, then we're gonna go and throw some kind of an error. And in this case that I called bad, we're actually throwing a string, a primitive string, which is not even an error. So if you keep doing this throughout your application, at some point you're gonna find yourself writing very low quality code without any consistency at all, even if this string that we just threw is going to show up in the console, all right? This is not very scalable and this is a bad practice. Never do that and we commented out and forget about it. The next way of throwing an error is actually throwing a real error, all right? Here we do throw an error and we pass a message that we want, but to be honest, this error is kind of lacking extra information that would be useful to us when we are later debugging our application. Imagine if, it, if it's in production and we really have limited time to debug, every second would cost us, it would be really helpful if we can help ourselves in advance. So it's okay, but maybe there's a better way, which is the best way here. So we're still trying to throw an error, but instead we're throwing a new app error and we're passing uh, a, a name of the error, we're passing uh, an error code, a description and some kind of a flag. You might ask me, what the hell is an app error? I've never seen that before. And you would be totally right because an app error is basically a custom class that extends the ordinary JavaScript error, all right? And here we not only have the name of the error and the description, we also have an HTTP code that can later help us with debugging so much. And we also can pass any flags that we want. In this case, I have a flag called is operational and it's a Boolean. And is operational basically means that this error is predictable. For example, it is some, it, some kind of an HTTP error failed because of the network issues, all right? This is easy to debug and this is easy to fix versus some kind of a logical error that the programmer missed, all right? So this is one of the ways and basically to demonstrate it, I would copy this here to the very bottom of the file. And instead of running it with TypeScript and Node, actually I can save time and I can use Quokka, an extension that I recently installed. So I'm gonna say run once, no, yeah, we can also run it on save, but let's say run on save and it runs and prints everything that you would normally see in the console here. So here we have, due to the mismatch between the client and so on, basically we threw this error and the code is 404 and the name is resource not found. So everything looks perfect and it works just the way I predicted. So basically make sure you use this kind of an app error instead of using the ordinary error object, all right? A quick detour. I recently realized that I've never done a giveaway to my loyal subscribers. And that's what I really want to change now. Did you guys see the extension that I was using Quokka to live execute my code without even opening the terminal and seeing the values next to my code? I think that was pretty cool. And guess what? I wanna gift you three free one-year licenses of Quokka and two free one-year licenses of Wallaby. They are very similar. Wallaby is just a cooler version of Quokka that you can use for unit testing as well. But in any case, I think you would benefit from those 
and please go down in the video description and grab your license for free no strings attached first come first serve go for it you're welcome all right our next example is gonna be about central error handling meaning you don't throw and uh, like work on your errors whenever or wherever you want but rather in one centralized place in a specific way to keep your code cleaner so let's imagine we have a route controller and we're adding trying to add a new item but it throws an error and it's forbidden so and it's the same in the catch block so what do we do here we basically forward this error to the um to the middleware which is specific for error handling all right this is the best practice that usually every project has but now in this error handling middleware we usually have a lot of logic to check for example if the severity of the error is high by the way this app error is carried from the previous example so we're still building on it anyway we're gonna check for the severity which is a new flag for example and then we might send an email to the support or admins and so on but again this is just too much logic coupled in a very bad way and we're also logging it here i don't like this a, a good way of this actually would be to define an, a custom error handler which is which can do a lot of cool stuff at the same time in a centralized place so we can log the error we can fire monitoring metrics for our monitoring applications that we will that is going to check our performance the detailed stack trace and so on and we also can crash the node process if necessary or not so what we you, you would usually do here is take this handler that was created by from this error handler and instead of doing all of this logic here we would simply use it like this then handle error and we would pass our error inside this so like this and we would pass the response here all right or request rather so and this error handler would do everything for us and now if you use this handle error in your routes for example or in your cron jobs or anywhere in your application you're gonna know that everything handled in one centralized place and this is much better all right so the third example i think this one is my favorite so imagine we are getting into an uncaught exception meaning we didn't catch this exception anywhere in our application so the last resort for the node process to actually catch it is actually here process on uncaught exception and instead of just shutting off the our node process and the whole application to i don't know thousands of users because of an, some kind of an unknown error we can gracefully handle the pro process exit or not handle instead so as we said there are operational errors which are like a failed network request or just a database failure which is fine and we can it can be restarted like the docker container can be restarted automatically we don't really need to panic all right but what if the operational this is not an operational error and instead it's a logical error where for example your application memory or application store gets stuck and it's unstable this can lead to bigger problems in the future so instead of just shutting off the application to thousands of users we can instead check whether we need to do that in fact all right so as soon as we get an exception we're going to use this handler that we saw in the previous example what this handler is going to do is first of all log an error if necessary send a mail so if critical also save an operations queue if critical all right we're doing all of this cool stuff or we can do this and we can determine if it is operational error or not and also well this is pretty much the same thing we can check if it's a trusted error if it's a trusted error means it's an instance of, of an app error which means it got thrown where we would expect it to be thrown or we've actually threw it and the is operational flag is actually true then we are not going to exit our process and the node app is still going to function even if there's an uncaught exception but if it if it is a critical uh, um critical error then we need to exit the process to let the docker container to be restarted automatically all right so this is one of the cool ways of handling your process exit gracefully and the fourth example that we have is pretty similar to the one we saw before but in a more um, interesting way so imagine we have the dal which stands for data access layer and this is a 
asynchronous operation where we're trying to get a user by ID. And let's say Jon Snow is not alive anymore. So if it's false, we're going to be very sad. And what this unhandled rejection or uncaught exception will do is very similar, but two different things. So unhandled rejection reacts to asynchronous um, errors that were not handled, all right? Because in here, we didn't handle the error case, okay? So what if we throw an error? We don't have a catch block here, all right? We don't have anything to catch here, and we don't even have a try catch block. So it's going to go to the last resort, which is the unhandled rejection. So we either can do can perform some operation here to gracefully stop our error, or we can actually omit this because even asynchronous operations end up in uncaught exception, and then we can handle it here. So we're going to receive it here, and then we can do pretty much the same thing that we saw in the previous example. And if it's a if it's not a trusted error, then we do need to exit the process and restart the application. Okay, some extra points from me. Also, don't forget to use a JSON schema validator to catch the majority of the client initiated errors by simply validating the incoming data, okay? So for note, my favorite one is AJV. It's basically like TypeScript for the requests. Also, make sure to use a good logger to log everything that happened on your server, but preferably something better than just a simple console log. So my suggestion would be Winston or Pino. The next thing would be making sure to test your errors within unit tests. A lot of developers only test the happy path scenarios, completely forgetting about testing the error handling and logging that error. Also, you probably have documentation for your API, okay, that you built maybe with Swagger, most likely. Just don't forget to list the possible errors, or at least the ones that you are actively handling with your application, just to give the heads up to your users. And last but not least, use an application monitoring tool to monitor the telemetry, uptime and performance, and probably all of that combined with logs. My suggestion would be Datadog. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, it's just a suggestion. And as always, if you liked this video and found it useful or learned something new, please make sure to subscribe not to miss any further videos and smash like under this video because it's really gonna help my channel to be shown to other fellow developers. And if you want, you can of course support me on Patreon with a dollar or two just to buy me a beer over the weekend. I'll see you guys in the next one.